Hi, welcome to this talk. Before I start, I would like to thank the organizers and the sponsors for giving me the chance to speak here today. My name is Marta Timon and I'm a data scientist at Cabify. And today I would like to tell you about ticket to beg which is a model, a machine learning model that we developed at Cabify using natural language processing to classify customer complaints and detect sexual harassment. To give you a bit of context, whenever a user wants to contact us, either because they want help or they have some sort of issue with our app, they can do so by going to the help menu in, in our Cabify app. And there they have to specify what, what was the problem that they had. So for example, if the problem was uh, related to the price of a journey or if it was related to the vehicle. And then they have to go through some steps where they have to um, select some options and specify uh, further specify the problem that they have. And they finally arrive to this formula where if the issue that they had was related to some journey, they can select the journey in question uh, in this drop down menu. And then they have this free text field where they can um, give us further details of the problem that they had. And once that uh, this formula is filled and, and the user press send, this um, generates a ticket um, in our system, which arrives to the customer service. And in the customer service, we have agents, which are the, the people in charge of solving tickets. And one straightforward way that we could deal with those tickets would be just take all the tickets, put them in a big queue, and let the agents solve them one by one as they arrive. And um, this is what you see here in this picture. However, we thought that we might do something smarter. And the idea was if we are able to identify the intent of those tickets and classify them before we send them to an agent, let's say uh, we are able to identify all the tickets where the passenger the passengers are telling us that they forgot something in the car and they want to retrieve it, we call that lost item tickets, we would be able to do things such as sending those tickets to a specialized queue where the agents uh, have uh, special protocols to solve lost item tickets or they have higher priority. As another example, if we were able to identify um, those tickets where the users are requesting for the invoice of a journey, we would be able to um, automatically generate the invoice and send it to the, to the user without having to waste the time of an agent. However, the problem that we had at the beginning was that the only information that we had was the option chosen by the users um, in that help menu. But this gave us many problems because first of all, the user, we saw that the users were often choosing the wrong label. For example, we had uh, an option to report car accidents uh, and we had users that were uh, sending us tickets telling us that they were uh, car accidents but actually they weren't car accidents and they were just choosing that option uh, because they thought that in this way the, their ticket would get a higher priority. And a second problem that we had and this was actually fo uh, a fault of the UX that we had back then um, is that we had options that were too generic, such as journey other or driver other, which um, most of the users were choosing and they weren't giving us any meaningful information. And here is where we realized that uh, we couldn't force our operations logic into uh, the user experience and we, have to, we had to separate those things. So on one side, we wanted to be able to 
um, had a good user experience and on the other hand we wanted to be able to optimize the operations of, of our customer service. And all of this was causing delays in the response of, of many tickets due to misclassifications. So the idea was to um, take natural language processing, use natural language processing, uh, applied to this free text field uh, from the formula to better classify those tickets. So we used supervised learning, we took a bunch of tickets, roughly 200,000, and we used this text from the free text field to uh, identify those tickets. And since it was supervised learning, um, we needed what we called in machine learning a target or a ground truth, um, so that uh, we had the real category of every ticket. And we did that we did that using the work that our agents already do. So for every ticket that an agent solves at Cavify they have to add a label where they specify what was the problem and how it was solved. And we use this information to create 18 uh, different ticket categories. We also use uh, a standard natural language processing pipeline. So we applied some pre-processing, for example, to remove numbers or punctuation marks. We applied vectorization, so to turn words into numbers that an algorithm can later handle. We also applied feature selection, for example, we remove typos or unfrequent words. And finally, uh, we use a classification algorithm, which in our case, it was um, a really simple classification algorithm, namely support vector machine. And we put this in production with the help of our engineering team. We use scikit-learn to build the model. We use Flask for the API. We use G-Unicorn for the server. And we deployed it using Docker. And we might have thought, OK, maybe here uh, we were done. Our model was in production and running. But this wasn't the case because there was um, a particular set of, of tickets dealing with um, sexual harassment cases. So we had uh, cases, especially where the driver would have a violent or um, a sexual behavior towards the passenger and the, passenger, the passengers were reporting uh, those incidents to us. And we wanted uh, to take those tickets to a priority queue so that they could have a quicker response so that we could have specialized agents with training in dealing with uh, harassment cases and also so that we could set special protocols of how to deal with these issues. And this was a priority to us, not only because we wanted to take care of our users in such an important and sensitive situation, but also because we wanted to prevent future incidents. Uh, we could have cases for example, like a driver um, could have a violent behavior uh, towards a passenger. And even if the passenger was reporting that to us, um, if we didn't uh, saw this ticket and, and dealt with it uh, in a timely manner, then this driver could um, repeat this behavior with a new passenger um, before we could, um, we could act on it and, and prevent this from happening. So the tool that we were um, that we were using um, so far was a dictionary with harassment related words. And the way it worked is that if any of those harassment related words was contained in this free text field of the formula, then this ticket would automatically automatically go to this priority queue. And we thought that we could probably do better by applying natural language processing uh, and detecting these harassment uh, tickets. 
So uh, what we did was actually we, we took the harassment tickets that we had, we add them to our training uh, data set, and we retrain our ticket with these new categories. We, we, we retrain our model with these new categories. But we realized that by doing this, actually we were not detecting uh, harassment at all. And the reason why this was happening um, is related to these to these um, image, to this graph here, which shows the volume of tickets that we have uh, per category. So here we have all the categories that we defined, the 18 categories, and here we have the volume of tickets that we have on each category. And what we see here is that the so-called Pareto rule applies, um, which means that roughly 20% of the categories, let's say for example these four categories, hold or accumulate roughly 80% of the tickets. And on the other hand, we had this very important category, uh, namely the harassment category, which was one of the minority classes. So as a summary, we had a highly imbalanced data set, we had a large number of classes, and we have one minority class, which was really important. And when we have this situation, what happens is that out-of-the-box classification algorithms normally do not behave well. What they do is that they just ignore minority classes. And the second problem that we had, which is kind of related to the previous one, is that the most common metric that we use for classification um, is the accuracy, which measures out of all of the cases or all of the tickets that our algorithm classified, how many of them had a correct label. And the problem with this metric is that it does not reflect well our goal in this case of having a really important minority class. And to understand better why this happens, um, if we think about, uh, for example, an algorithm that would directly I ignore all these classes um, and just classify uh, only tickets in these uh, four majority classes. Uh, since uh, those four classes accumulate roughly 80% of the tickets, I could get an accuracy up to 80%, um, but, and this could lead us to think that our algorithm uh, would be performing well since we had a, a such a high accuracy, but uh, this would be not the case because we would be ignoring the minority classes. So in order to solve this, uh, first of all, we added new metrics. We added um, the harassment precision and the harassment recall. So the harassment precision is out of all of the tickets that the algorithm classify as harassment, how many of them are actually about harassment, are real harassment cases. This is inversely proportional to the number of false positives. On the other hand, we added the recall, which uh, is um, out of all of the, all of the tickets that um, talk about harassment, how many, how many of them is the algorithm able to detect. But this is just on the metric side, we also had to do something with the algorithm and what we did was use cost-based classification. And when we use cost-based classification, we define a cost for false negative, so the cost of not detecting harassment, and a cost for a false positive, the cost of raising a false alarm. And in our case, it was really clear that the cost of not detecting harassment was way bigger than the cost of raising a false alarm. Because if we raise a false alarm, what happens is just that we are um, taking more tickets into these priority queues. This is something that we have to watch out for, uh, for sure, but it's something that we can handle. On the other hand, if we fail to detect harassment, then those tickets will never um, go into this priority queue in the first place and then the whole system lost, uh, loses its purpose. So 
I'm not going to go um, uh, a lot in detail of how this cost-based uh, classification works, but um, the fact is that we implemented it and it worked. We were able to detect 90% of harassment tickets, that is the recall metric, without sacrificing the overall performance of the algorithm. So, once that we had fixed our algorithm to detect harassment cases, we wanted to validate the model uh, using an experiment to compare um, our model with the system that it was meant to replace. So we focus on two categories, uh, harassment tickets and lost item tickets, because those were the categories that we wanted to redirect to these um, priority queues and we run the experiment for one month and also we focus on passenger or what we call rider tickets so at Cabify we can get both um, tickets from our passengers or from our drivers but in this case we focus only on the uh, passenger or rider side and we perform an AV test so half of the tickets were redirected using our machine learning model and half of the tickets were redirected using what we had before. So in the case of lost item, we, the tickets were redirected with the option chosen by the user in the help menu. And in the case of harassment um, tickets, they were redirected using the dictionary of harassment related words. And the results um, of the experiments were really good because for the uh, harassment um, category we had that although the precision of the dictionary was better than, than the precision of our model, so our model was creating um, a, higher, uh, a higher number of false positives, our model was giving us a way higher record. So, where the dictionary was only being able to detect less than 20% of the harassment tickets, our algorithm was able to detect 90% of the case, which was a huge win. For the lost item category, it was even better because um, our algorithm was better than the option chosen by by the user both in terms of precision and recall and in terms of precision we saw that um, there were up to 30 percent of the users which were um, reporting uh, tickets as lost items when they actually weren't lost item tickets and um, yeah our our precision with the algorithm was higher and then we have also that uh, many users put uh, lost item tickets without choosing the lost item tickets option in the menu. And our algorithm was able to identify those tickets correctly as lost item. Another thing we looked at at this experiment was the average resolution time and we use two metrics to, to look at this. We first use the first reply time, which is the time that happens between the creation of a ticket and the first response of an agent. And then uh, we also use the full resolution time, which is the time that happens between the creation of a ticket and the complete resolution of that ticket. And we um, measure those metrics on average for each of the two groups that we had on, on our experiments. So the control group was business as usual. So Mm, either redirecting tickets, either using the option selected by the user or the harassment dictionary. And then we had um, the, those tickets in the treatment group, uh, which were the ones redirected with the machine learning algorithm. 
And here we see in the results that the numbers in the control groups, the average resolution time for the control group is way higher in all cases than the average resolution time when the tickets were redirected with the machine learning model. So we uh, indeed prove that our model was better um, at the job um, of the system that it was replacing. So um, after the experiment, we decided to put this model in production uh, with, within a pilot to solve and redirect tickets automatically. And we used the model um, besides uh, the two categories that we already had to redirect tickets for harassment and lost item. We added two new categories. One uh, for the tickets that the model we would recognize as the user uh, requesting an invoice, um, it would uh, trigger an automatic answer that would send the uh, invoice to the user. And then uh, for the tickets um, identified uh, as those tickets where the user is telling us that the price uh, that they they were charged was different from the, the price that they saw at the estimation, we would also uh, make an automation. And well, in this case, this category is important because in uh, one of the um, uh, main characteristics of, of Cabify is that uh, you can see the price of a journey upfront. And we call this price um, the estimated price because you can see it before you order a journey. And sometimes the user uh, complains that the price that they are charged is different than the one that they saw that they saw in this estimation. And yeah, in the case that we that we identify those type of tickets, we would make some automatic background checks to to see. Uh, those cases where the price was actually the same than the estimated and uh, to those subset we will send um, an automatic answer telling them that the price was the one that they uh, should expect and, and uh, telling them in detail uh, what was the price that, and that, uh, that we gave to them and also telling them that they could contact us uh, further if they, if they had any more doubts. So once that we had our model in, in, in production, we thought it was the time to monitor the performance of our model on a weekly basis. And that's what you see here in these two graphs. These two graphs show the precision and recall metrics for the four categories um, used in the pilot. And what these graphs showed us was that uh, the recall, although the recall was as high as we expected, the precision was way lower than, than what we had on, on our tests. And after investigating why was this happening, we discovered two reasons. First of all, um, since this happened during uh, the, the global pandemic, um, we realized that we were having a new category. So there were users writing us about uh, COVID-19 related issues, and we didn't we we didn't train uh, the the model for detecting COVID-19 issues because uh, we trained it before this happened. Uh, so all these tickets had a wrong label. And we realized that we had to redefine the categories to correct this. And uh, the second thing that we discovered is that we had many duplicated tickets. And those duplicated tickets, um, well, first of all, it's, it's normal that they, that we get those kind of tickets because um, sometimes our users 
send uh, the same ticket more than once, either because they get nervous or because they are unsure if their first uh, ticket uh, arrived to us. And those tickets are um, categorized by our agents just as duplicates. We don't want to waste time solving those tickets twice. And since we only have that label, that duplicate label, we cannot use them for evaluation or training. But the interesting thing here is not just that we have to remove those tickets from, from our analysis, but that we had to develop an independent initiative to deal and reduce the duplicates that we were getting. And that's what I, everything that I wanted to tell you today. Uh, as key takeaways, uh, first of all, cost-based classification uh, can help if you ever get to have an imbalance problem. Uh, it definitely helped us. And secondly, and most importantly, deploying machine learning models in a company is a continuous process you have to make an MVP and iterate and give up the idea that you are going to get everything right at the first shot. Also, you have to experiment, you have to prove that your model works uh, as it's expected to work, and also that it outperforms uh, the model that is, uh, or the system that is uh, substituting in, if, if that's your case. And finally, and most importantly, um, continuous monitoring and, and revision of, of your model is, is vital uh, because not only you will find things to improve in your model uh, and maybe even things that are not related to your model but might also add value to your business, but uh, in general, uh, to make sure that the the machine learning model performs in time as you expected. So that's it for me. Um, thank you very much.